Hey guys, welcome to Bullfrog Pawn Shop. In this video, I'll show you how I switched out the AC motor in this old no-name drill press with a DC treadmill motor and added some cool accessories. I'll start with the R&D part of the story, but if you want to skip straight to the build, I'll put timestamps in the description as well as links to items I had to purchase. As you all know, controlling the speed on most drill presses is a real pain. You have to move the belt up and down the pulley stack and then retention the belt every time you want to change speeds. Making matters worse, my smallest drive pulley is broken, so I can't access the lowest speed, which is necessary when using large Forstner bits or hole saws, for example. Based on the original motor's RPMs, I used an online pulley calculator to estimate the speeds for all five steps on the pulley, and I wrote them on the wall. The slowest speed, which I can't access, is still too fast for large hole saws. And who would ever need to spin a drill press at 4800 RPMs? First I looked online, but I couldn't find anything about this no-name drill press, not even mentioned. So finding a part number and ordering a replacement part was out of the question. Then I tried 3D printing a step pulley. I spent hours 3D modeling and printed countless test prints, and I just could not get it to work right. Meanwhile, I had started collecting free treadmills found on the side of the road. In addition to the butt kick and DC motors, which can be infinitely speed controlled and are easily reversible, treadmills have lots of great parts for makers. Every treadmill has two nice rollers with bearings, so maybe someday I'll make these into a some type of in-feed table. A nice large flat piece of HDF? It seems denser than MDF, so I'm calling it HDF. It usually has some type of a coating, like a thick melamine coating on one or both sides. This one has one. I'm going to use this to build the table saw, cross-cut sled for my table saw. The coated side with a little wax I think will slide really nicely. If the treadmill has a powered incline adjustment, you're in luck because you'll get a linear actuator. Thanks to Brad from DIY Builds, I used one to build this electric vise after watching his video. Haha, <laughs> pretty cool. And the walking belt has all kinds of uses too. It makes a nice non-scratch surface for a workbench. And I also used it to line the inside of my vise. So I've had plans to retrofit this drill press with a treadmill motor for some time now. Now that I'm retired, let's get to it. Treadmill motors usually have a large flywheel integrated with a micro V belt drive pulley like this one. For the past couple weeks, I've been trying to figure out how to attach one of these matching pulleys to the shaft of my drill press. So first I epoxied a piece of hardwood into the pulley my plan was to bore that out then to fit the drill press shaft. Lo and behold, this drill press has a tapered shaft. Uh, as I was researching tapers online, I discovered that in addition to the well-known Morse taper, there's another lesser known taper used on machinery called the Jacobs taper, which is commonly, commonly used to attach, you guessed it, Jacobs chucks. So I figured I could put this in my metal lathe, bore a hole in the wood core, and then take it to a machine shop and have them ream the taper with a Jacobs taper reamer. And yes, there is such a thing. Well, the guy didn't have one of those, and he was going to have to charge me $150 to set it up on his CNC. I'm pretty sure I'd have my hillbilly engineer card revoked if I paid that much. Turns out, though, the taper isn't a Jacobs taper anyway. It's some random taper. Oh, God. That means I'm stuck with the step pulley. Then I realized this other micro V pulley without the core fits almost perfectly on my step pulley. There's a little bit of play. Maybe I could toss in a couple shims or some set screws or even fill it with epoxy. This is absolutely doable. I am back in business. Now before I make any irreversible changes to my existing pulley, I better see if I can get a longer micro V belt. No, not happening. Here are a couple treadmill belts that I have. Uh, this is the longest one, and I figure I'd need about double that length. So, no good. Now, I should tell you that up to this point, I hadn't taken the motor that I was planning to use for this project down off the shelf. It's big, heavy, and awkward to handle. I had this motor that I'm using for another project on my bench, so I was looking at it. Like all the treadmill motors I've seen, this has a one-piece flywheel and drive pulley. 
And in my research, I read that the flywheel also acts as a fan on most motors. So up to this point, I had always assumed that I'm going to have to use the flywheel and pulley that came on the motor. Well, I finally got this big motor down off the shelf and hidden behind the flywheel was this fan and another on the other end. So it dawned to me that I could remove the flywheel and just use a regular V-belt pulley. Next step was to mount the electronic speed controller to the wall and make a control panel. I used this hideous piece of 1970s air for mica, which by the way clashes very nicely with my disc sander table, to mount the system controls between these studs. I found this nice lighted rocker switch in my spare parts collection. This particular treadmill used a 10K ohm potentiometer. Um, I wanted to get slower speeds, so I bought this 20K pot on Amazon. This is the digital tachometer I bought on Amazon. It requires 9 to 15 volts DC to operate, so I found this inline 12 volt adapter in my huge AC adapter collection. I needed an inline one as opposed to the wall ward type so I could snip off the ends and wire them directly into the main switch so that this all powers on with the system. The wiring schematic for the TAC was clear and easy to follow. The TAC sensor is located right here. I super glued the magnet to the bottom of the pulley after scuffing both surfaces with some sandpaper. It doesn't line up perfectly because the casting is in the way, but it's close enough that it works. While I'm at it, I figured I might as well integrate this laser sight into the system. It works great and I really like it, but it runs on two AA batteries, so if you forget to turn it off, the batteries run down. Surprisingly, I did not have a 3 volt adapter in my collection, so I bought one off Amazon for a couple bucks. I cut the little plug off the end, drilled the hole in the back, and ran the wires right into it, and soldered it onto the two terminals. I cut the female end off of an old extension cord and connected the wires to the system power switch. I was able to use a lot of these crimp on connectors, so I had very little soldering to do. Wherever I did have to solder, I used heat shrink tubing for a clean, safe, professional look. I also used this mesh tubing wire bundling stuff that was on the treadmill to bundle some of the wires together. You can cut it with scissors and then just seal the ends with a lighter. And now, let's try it out. Turn on the system. It takes about a second for the power supply to get going. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's really smooth. Really slow. The really cool thing about this electronic speed control is if you put a load on the motor, in other words, make it hard to, for it to turn, uh, the electronic speed controller will increase the power to the motor in an effort to maintain the same speed. So when I squeeze on this, you'll see the RPMs will go down for a second then the speed controller will kick in, give it some more power, it will go up, back up. Probably not exactly to that speed. Uh, and then when I let go, it takes about a second for it to, to uh, decrease the power. So you'll see the speed go up and then back down a little bit. So here we go. A little load on there. I'll let go. And back down. really smooth oh yeah if any of you guys are interested in building something like this I'll be happy to draw a schematic and post it online just let me know in the comments don't forget to tap that like button and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching we'll see you next time at Bullfrog Pond Workshop